Okay, so here we are. We're starting out. This is the morning of the Rubicon Trail. Hi, May I introduce Craig. Craig and Todd? There they are. Oh, and we've got this guy. Is Everybody knows who this nice. guy He's is. Helping. And here he is, I'm the, the fearless one. I'm the helper. He's the hippie. He's the helper. <laughs> Here's our El vehicle hippie. over there. <laughs> He's the maestro. Yeah. Maestro. Yeah. We are driving in the first hour of the Rubicon. We're in our little white TJ. There. We're going to Uncle Tom's Cabin. It's a 1860s bar. We've been on forest roads for a long time now. It's way the heck out there. Mr. Dunton, how's it feel to be starting? Well, it's great. This is the uh, the uh, start of the culmination of a 35-year dream to drive the river on. So, and this is our beast for the next five days. So we'll see how it goes. Highly modified and uh, feels good. Here we are, here's what we got. We got this stuff. We got one of these. Tom's cabin. First stop. It shouldn't happen if you park here. So here we are at Uncle Tom's. We've got a partner's here, man. Yeah. We've got a And why do they want to close it? There's always two groups. One group that wants to keep driving, and then there's this other group that thinks everything human is bad for nature. Right. So they think the only way to preserve nature or whatever is left of it by keeping humans out. Right. So their movement is to keep cars out of the trees, period. And um, there's a couple of different ways to do that. You know, and like any other war, they try this, it doesn't work. They try the next one, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And so they pull the endangered species uh, thing, you know, with no, either an animal or a flower uh, or artifacts up here. Find something better than that. They find artifacts up here. We're telling them and they know, you know, tell anybody, go, huh? Yeah, Indians go where we go. They, they like those places. If we like the river spots, you know, they're they right. They like them too. So they know so they're going to find all them. All this water is going to second. But it's awful easy for some guy to be walking along and, and something accidentally water. falls out of his right. pocket. So maybe kicks it and steps it. Maybe someone finds it or he finds it an hour later. I don't trust it. Oh, I see. I don't trust it. Well, I hear you. That's why we call it piss for willies. So, say again? Um, Piss fur willies. Huh? The, the county because... That's what they are. Mm. Um, so, as slow as possible. There are some exceptions, but the general rule, as slow as you can. Um, if you haven't been in the water before, if you haven't been crossing this last week, <coughs> We have to get in the water. We have to walk it. Really? Somewhere in Africa, New Zealand, Dark. we have to get in the Even water. Even if I can see it? No, you don't no. see anything. I know in Africa you don't. <clears throat> well, here you don't see much either. You really don't? Oh, okay, How that's deep not... is it? I think it's between a foot and a foot and a half, 18 well, inches. 
you know. <laughs> Let it be Mike Gass. How close am I? Well, you never know. You I think you don't know, know you're saying. You That'd be Mike Gass. I mean, just with the, I mean, blood fracture and all that physical stuff. I never can't under, really see how to Never do. underestimate. So you want to be in there. And you have to walk it a couple of times so you get the entire width of this whole thing. And if there's no visibility, like here you cannot see, at least see there's no metal in there, no rod sticking out, you know, no dumped bodies or something. So just a couple of rocks sticking out. But many times, rivers are not that clear. So you can't really look into it. So you really have to feel it with your feet, you know how deep it is, how soft it is, mm -hmm. whether there's obstruction in there. You know, maybe somebody dumped an old car in there mm -hmm. and you run into it. You don't want to do that. You good? You missing it? And you're missing it with the back. It's good, you're around them. You're heading towards this one, you're driving over it. And you might wanna go a little bit your way. Yep, skip that one, yep. Low gear popped out. How was it, Todd? Uh, that was nice. Hairball. Nice water. We, we got <laughs> stuck in the middle of it. Wasn't that smooth, actually? <laughs> so day uh, one still of the Rubicon Trail. Cruising along, give you a sense. Here it is. <laughs> We're in low range at that. It's about four o'clock. We have had a leisurely day getting used to the vehicles and lunching and heard all about crossing water. Big one over here. Good job. We climb, we need more oomph to get up the hill. And at the same time, it's really good to go slow because it gives me more time to think, more time to correct, you know? React. And like in mountain climbing, you really want to do this slowly. You can scramble up the hill <coughs> and you might make it, you know? But if you miss one of the grips, and then you're down the hill. You want to be so, deliberate. Same thing here. You really want to do this very, very slow, especially in the beginning. Later on, you might find some spots where you can go a little faster. You know, but it, we need the lockers to keep wheels from slipping and spinning. So it's a proactive tool. And mm -hmm. you, the drivers, play a really important role in this because you have to see something from experience where you might need it, or you will definitely need it, okay? okay. So like in this case, mm -hmm. um, and pretty much whenever the terrain is really uneven, one tire goes down, one tire goes up, and if both tires do that, front and rear, you know, both axles, then there's a high likelihood of losing traction. Even more so if there's a high demand for torque, high demand for torque means you're going up the hill somewhere, okay? Then you okay. need more torque. torque. Um, so, you may have seen already the switches that you have in your center console. Mm -hmm. There's one for the front, one for the rear to make it easy for you. 
front locker, rear locker. Mm -hmm. It works in a way that they have a safety switch cover like airplanes. So you want to flip the cover up and turn the toggle switch on. Those aren't guns? No. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> They're missiles. That's <laughs> missile and lock. <laughs> to turn it off, you just push the cover down and it turns everything off. Okay. As you push the cover down, it yes. turns it off. Okay. And so you want to, you have two options. One is off and everything is down. On means the cover is up and the switch is off. You, move the you don't want to have anything in between because sometimes I see people, they have, just to get ready, they have the safety cover up, but the toggle switch is not on. Mm -hmm. That defeats the purpose of those switches because I put them deliberately in the center console so you can feel them which is really important when you drive and you have something Keep hard to eyes. concentrate on. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take your eyes off the road and focus on the dash and find something on the dash, send your finger there, mm -hmm. you know. It's easier to find something with your fingers. Okay. Like, you know, a manual shifter, you don't think about second, third, you no. know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, just there. It's there, you know. Even in the beginning when you have to think about whether you want to do second or third, you feel it and your brain can do yeah. that easily. Yeah. However, taking your eyes off the road and focusing on the dash is more complicated, okay? Um, so, yes, you should activate those lockers whenever there's a need. Like in this case here, there's some articulation involved. You know, one tire goes up, one tire goes down. So, turn it on. And you always turn them only on for a second or two. You know? Oh really? Okay. Only as long as you're over the obstacle, then turn them off again. Because the, one of the negative side effects of lockers is they really hamper your steering. You know, up to the point that you can't steer at all, which is bad. So you want to turn it off when you don't need them. And make it a habit, you know, if you had both of them on, after you turn them off, let go of your steering wheel for a couple of seconds, you know and then grab it again and start steering. You let go. Yes. Release the pressure. Uh, uh, let, let it find its... Disconnect. Yes. It's, it disconnect. We talk, you're right, you mentioned that last night. Mm -hmm. That'll take some practice. Take Especially, some. you know, we'll have that later on. There's one climb, we'll stair step. Uh, you need both lockers, otherwise there's just no way to crawl up, you know. And right after you're up, you have to make a right turn. So you're up this little climb, turn off the switches, let go of your steering wheel, count for a couple of seconds, and then start turning. If you turn too early, it's still binding, you will not be able to make this turn. And you can, you know, wrestle your steering as much as you want, it doesn't want to go over. And Plus, the, does the front locker inhibit the steering, obviously, more than the rear? I know the rear is going to yes, push the car too, yes, but, but yes. more so, right? Yeah. The front has a more dramatic effect than the rear, but both of them affect the steering. steering right. okay. And in the front, you know, fighting the locker now with your steering is another bad idea because now you're wrestling the steering. Again, too much hydraulic force, bad. Okay, right, because right, it's power steering, right? Or hydraulic power. So you're magnifying. Okay. So, and whenever you drive something difficult like this, you want to do this as slow as possible which means for the manual transmissions, uh, no gas. The car will just do it for you. Even the steepest climb, don't touch the gas. The car will do it for you. Just first gear. Uh, automatic is a different story. You have to massage that a little bit, you know, and you constantly have to use both brake, gas. And you always want to be with your left foot on the brake, never with your right foot. One of the reasons for that is sometimes when you want to slow down your vehicle, more on a on a long downhill on your brake and your brake your brake over time always goes down to the floor so if you do that with your right foot eventually you end up on the gas yeah, <laughs> and, and that can be really scary yeah, it can be dangerous so you don't want to be there if you do that with your left foot there's no risk of touching the brake pedal unless you have really big feet you know but we're not there <laughs> right so if you're not experienced are you going to give us a a verbal on Yes. When we think we should hit front and rear, or I, like, I don't know yet. Yes. <clears throat> in general, if you have a straight shot and there's not much steering involved, I would use both. Okay. Okay. 
uh, if there's some steering involved, like the beginning here, there's a little bit of steering. Uh, right. You know, right. yeah, you know, the, the rear should do. However, mm -hmm. you always want to be aware that you might have misjudged the whole situation, and at one point you might need the front. And you'll notice by your tires starting to slip. Slip. As soon as they start slipping, do not step on the gas. Okay, right. So, um, your reaction has to be right that second when it starts slipping, turn locker. in your front locker. Even off. if you turn it only on for a second, sometimes that's enough to get enough grip to get going. Get and then turn again. it off again. Mm -hmm. But don't step on the gas. Okay. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> this first little part here, you see you have those rocks in the center there. And you can tell already, most people have been trying to avoid this, swinging to the, to the right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's two rocks in the bushes waiting for you, and they're black on the side. Yep, right, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, uh, you might as well just you know, put your tires, your left tires, on these rocks. Oh. You know, in a gentle left turn. The rocks in the center, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we got enough clearance to take left tire right over that big yes. black rock and into yes. the hole beyond it. Yes. It'll go down yes. and back, okay. Go over yes. all three of those rocks. Yes. All after, three? After that, yeah, you, gotta you know, make a turn. that means you're going to turn. After that, there's still a little bit of steering involved, you know, when you look at it, but not much. But it gets more dramatic, more big rocks, more articulation. Okay. So what I would recommend after you're done with those three rocks here, mm -hmm. add the front locker, you know, and then for some time, and until, until you, I tell you until when, you know, and then you would release the front because it's not really, not that it's not needed anymore, but you know, you want to wait what's coming. So, but you, for safety, you want to have the rear on. Keep your rear on. Okay. The way we're going to do this is uh, I will drive this and you will just walk right next to me because I'm really slow. So I can talk to you and tell you what I'm doing, why I'm doing this. Okay. Okay. You know, no dry steering. But sometimes you have to turn your vehicle around and it, you don't really have much space. You have to do like a five-pointer, you know. So to, to really get this down to an R8 is, let's say you're backing up, your steering is all the way hard to the right, you're going back, back, back. The last two feet of you backing up, you want to straighten out your wheels. Because that, that gets turn. you ready for the next one. And if you're really good, you know, at the end you do already this. Oh, okay. I'm a little okay? farther. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To avoid, now that you're at standstill, do this. Yep. I say, prepare for that. And next yes, turn. there's all kinds of gear available that you can buy for your vehicle to take some of the stress away from from your steering. You know, there are steering braces that clamp the steering box onto the frame. All kinds of junk stuff. You know, uh, it's it's very expensive. Chromoly bars and what have you. Mm -hmm. You know, but you can save all that money and spend it on a girlfriend in Mexico. <laughs> you know, and you just got the margaritas this time. <laughs> <laughs> margaritas the and girl. speaks. <laughs> well, her name is Margarita. <laughs> <laughs> Starting in gear. So. And I want to focus on those rocks there and I want to bring my left tire onto the first one here. So on occasion it's okay to check whether your tire is really going there. And as you see I don't step on the gas. So I'm going over this one, over the next one. And now that I need a little bit of steering now to move my vehicle over. So just gradually. My grandma, just a little bit. Whenever you want to stop your car, you reach to the inside, turn off the key, and it stops. Yeah, it's done. Okay. Next victim. Okay, we've got Catherine and Neville making an attempt at our first um, rock garden that needs um, lockers. We're starting out with a, a rear locker. And as we get further up the trail here, 
we're going to also turn on the front locker uh, when we hit the straightaway. But right now we need maximum steering control. Bad boy, this is steep right here. Wow. He's going. <laughs> steering. So he's steering the nature of hard. Too, too much, you mean? Right yeah. Which also means now that he, that he's correcting. He's got to come back. And he's not in a good spot. So how are you telling me he was able to steer that much with his locker locked in the front? Uh, maybe he doesn't have it on. I don't know. Okay. Because he was trying to say it was on. I didn't think he could do it. How was that, guys? That is hard. Is that hard? <laughs> Chicky. <laughs> no harm, no foul. So you get a big one on your right that you can just go right over. Yeah, what do you like about the vehicles? Well, I mean, just this is a very simple system. This the diff locks? Diff locks, you know, the front one is in the front and back in the back. You know, yeah. Too often they try not to come onto the dash. Yeah. So just for the video, you're just sort of cruising along at idle, right? Yeah, I've got my foot off the accelerator. We've got an automatic here, which gives us a different set of challenges, a little bit harder. But it's, I'm getting plenty of left foot braking practice.
road somewhere. So he's saying we need both lockers here and staying as left as much as you can. A oh, little stair step. This is cool. This is cool. I'm going to get another TJ. <laughs> Sorry, honey. And what's the condition for another TJ? Darker. Both closer. Both closer. Good. The condition? You're going to start a business? Yes. Yeah. What is it? Uh, Guided four wheeling. Okay. Somewhere. <laughs> Rapidly on the garage, and you're holding, you're not holding with your brake, you'll be down the hill. Okay, okay. so you want to, in a way, just feel whether your brake is holding the holding vehicle or not, okay. you know, but you're good. So, the vehicle is not moving, so you're on your clutch mm -hmm. now, okay. put in reverse. So, we don't just start back up from here because um, you don't like the angle. If there's a little ledge on the side, then it might just be slipping. So, Look at that. <laughs> Step away from the wheel. <laughs> okay, always stuff to learn. And there too, you have to fight this instinct because as soon as you're up, you want to steer. Oh, yeah. No, don't touch the steering wheel. Turn off your lockers, let go of your steering wheel, and then you have an easy turn. <laughs> Say that again. This is utterly fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, when you see the terrain up there, and there's no real trail, you just have to drive through and around and up these rocks, and then you've got to, like this one in front, you have to go up and over. I tell you, it's, uh, it's good fun.
why this thing is breaking up. Is that you don't have one constant speed? Yeah. When you come to a stop, you need more torque to get going. Just to get again, the little and momentum. You start slipping. Yep, got gotcha. you. Know, so we'll have to do it again. Okay. <clears throat> Step on the gas, you start sliding, sliding. and then Okay, I'm missing that. <coughs> yep. <coughs> it's need it's just this wheel, this one will climb and this one will just follow. Yep. Okay. Never. Never. Wow. You're, you're right. The minute I hit that, Finding that I thought I was going to get a little the extra momentum, and instead, no. because <laughs> I'm already at a breaking point. See, the thing is, like I said, not only in terms of torque being a twisting force and possibly breaking parts, you only want to create so much torque that the vehicle keeps moving. Since your traction is very delicate, <clears throat> if you add torque, one thing that could happen is, I mean, one is breaking parts. The other thing is, your tires could break loose, mm -hmm. wow. which usually happened. happens when in a climb. And one additional thing will happen, since nothing is ever really flat, now you start sliding sideways. In this spot here, if you would keep doing this just for a couple of seconds, you'll flip over. I've seen this many times yeah, here. There's a little fun. hole on the side, that and then all of a sudden, him. one of your tires drops in there, and you go, and you go yep. over. Oh, okay. oh. And since you carry some of the beer, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> rock different than what you've driven on before. Well, here you think you've got traction until the very last minute and then you don't have it. And you don't want to break the wheel on the on the surface, so you've you've really got to get your line absolutely perfect and just go for it just at a crawl crawl space. It's it's, it's nothing more than a crawl. It's really really interesting. You know, we're not, I have absolutely no gas on at all now, it's just, 
Just on idle. Uh, okay, one. yeah, here's your next step. Let's see it. Let's see it. So it's no momentum in slot. It's just that like keep that momentum going and straight up. Constant speed, straight up. And look at the sky. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. So this is uh, day two and uh, started a little late this morning but about 9.30 and we've got a nice little ledge coming up here which is going to be really exciting and today Katie's driving. What do you reckon baby? It's pretty fun. Cool. We They're found just... out the easier stuff is this morning so I'm driving this morning and I've got Harold in front and Craig behind me. We had a big chat with a um, Forest Service employee and uh, got to see the different dynamics of people who are here. Forest Service, county, users like Harold. And, uh, they're not so, uh, they don't really understand each other and they're not really cooperating yet. Okay, now just, we're just going to go off here just for momentarily. Just So no pedals at all? Just keep it going. So you might have to have your foot on the accelerator if you go over this. So you're telling me a couple of things. Just let it, let it just go up now. Just keep it constant going up. That's it. Let it go up. That's it. Keep it going. Now a little bit of power. Not too much. Just to the right. To the right. Keep going. Keep going. Right. Righty ho, so you're going to miss this route on the left, yeah. and then you're going to go, once you've passed it, go to the left and then turn right. So you're going across these logs, parallel with the logs. Okay, left, and now go right. That's it. Now straighten up. said the driving gets tougher and tougher as you go along. this morning sir well that was quite tough but it just crawled up beautifully some of those rocks well, I mean we're going over rocks as big as this and it's amazing <laughs> have you learned anything new in the last 24 hours well I've certainly left learned uh, the art of left foot braking that is for sure Here's the lake we left this morning.
Harold, you got a fresh noise in the transmission over here. You can't make it go away. Something to do with the transfer case. Kind of hear it for low and for high. Uh, we'll go in and out of Formula Drive Low and see how it improves things. Okay, we'll try that. Oh, 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 oh. Cigars, <laughs> one of the essential tools of the field. It's focus. It's apparently. <laughs> Get one instead of Valium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I thought that was your upper. I thought the beer was the downer. <laughs> Not a U joint, right? No. Grab a beer. Oh, we're making a phone call. So we've got a rattle in this transfer case, which is really, really quite serious. Thankfully, it's not in our truck. And um, on the TJ that we had, which had exactly the same setup, what happened was that the big, the big main gear that runs inside the planetary gears moves forward on the shaft under load, and then the C-clip comes off and you get this funny rattle sound which can be a major problem. So I've never seen a satellite phone. Check it out. We've got a uh, transfer case that's about to go. So that slowed us down a bit. We called the mechanic on the satellite phone. And we're still going on something called Rubicon Springs, I guess, with a lake. And that's where we're trying to get. And if we can't get there, hopefully the Jeep will come to a halt at some good location where the mechanic can change out the transfer case. Meanwhile, here's the view. There's a big lake down there. One inch to the left. You're gonna go over it now, it's okay. You go ahead. There you go. Fire circle.
is three feet too far to the right. Uh huh. Right now. There, that's where I'm going to be. You see the boulder over your right? No. You're going to run straight into it. So use your windshield more. Yep. And you really want to hug this wall. Here. Okay. And close. Closer. Close hands. So close. Look at that. Look at that. In case you can't tell where the heck the trail might be, there's a little sign to tell you. Because it could be a little confusing. That's where it's definitely not. Not. <laughs> Commenting that this looks really skinny up here, and we thought we were already in skinny. Neville got some coaching to stay hard left. I think we'll put that into practice now. get a sense of how vast it is out here now. This is pretty desolate. Isn't that what Rubicon means? Across this river and you're in no man's land. First time we've got to back up, believe it or not.
go a little bit left. A little bit more. There you go. I'm happy. <laughs> Comment from the driver. Well, that was pretty fucking hair writing. <laughs> um, yeah. Phew. <laughs> so, where are we now, Neville? We're just coming into Rubicon Lake, or what's called Rubicon Springs, actually. And a hundred years ago, there used to be a two story, 160 bed hotel here. And that's what the Rubicon Trail was put in for to bring the guests into this Rubicon Springs Hotel. So is this where the trail ends then? No, then, it, then they carried on from here through that pass up there. Oh yeah. Over to Tahoe. Oh, Approaching Rubicon Springs, end of the second day. <laughs> I mean, it is fun, but very, very con high concentration. Yeah. But that's what we came for. You're getting what you came for, baby. I am indeed. <laughs> Thank you. That's where we came from. Okay, so here's a big dam. Thanks to the lake. Somebody's been dribbling uh, something. It's making a good trail marker. Oh, look, we're gonna go over the dam. What do you know? <laughs> Shit. Definitely would want to scout on this trip. It's uh, there's places where it's so hard to see where the trail is. There's probably multiple places you could take, but other places, boy, you could get into serious trouble if you didn't know where. Does it? That was doing great. It's been very heavy concentration. Probably the last two hours. We haven't seen the mechanic. We are hoping that the water is warm enough. Didn't really have any water yesterday. A little swim in the lake would really be nice. Of course, it's probably the temperature of frozen snow. Sure is clear though, can you see it?
Well, he's got a campsite in mind, I'm sure. Okay, how was it? Well, that was some mean driving. Good, good, hard country. Man, we covered some ground. Whew, I'm buggered. <laughs> Too. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> and then, and then you see this little gate there. Yeah. There's a tunnel, two and a half miles long. It feeds into a moon lake. Ah. Uh, yep. Uh, and where was the um, hotel? Um, well, one of the sites we passed yesterday. Yeah. We had a couple of old buildings. Yes. And the next one will be tomorrow when we ah, do lunch. Yes. So you're saying they blasted two and a half miles to get water from here to there? What was the purpose? Um, hydroelectric, they're all interconnected, so they have more influence over how much water goes in there. Wow. Is, there is a hydroelectric dam yeah. at wow. Loon, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. How was it? Well, The let's last see. Uh, hour and a half. Very challenging. Um, lots of angle changes. Uh, a lot of grinding going on in our <laughs> ride, but... More and more grinding? More and more grinding. Yeah. Got a little, little gnarlier at the end there, but yeah. it's all good.